Get ready to be shocked because the tomb of Amphipolis in northern Greece is actually not a tomb, it is a pyramid. This is what shocking revelations of the archaeologists have found. Now we know we have pyramids in Daigathus in Peloponnese, and uh, we have pyramids all throughout the Aegean, and the recently discovered tomb having to do with Alexander the Great and his family and his beloved compatriots and uh, wonderful beautiful statues has various chambers inside and they believed originally that it was a tomb now we've had archaeological uh, revelations of greek construction not only in greece but in uh, egypt india and even china and even latin america China has a beautiful, for example, open-air theater, an ancient theater that uh, is in excellent condition. This is the Giza Pyramid, and we'll uh, make reference to that when we so show the similarities of this Giza Pyramid with the pyramid here in Amphipolis of northern Greece. It's just west of Salonika. Amphipolis was actually the bay from which Alexander the Great's navy took off to conquer the known world at that time. And that's the little yellow uh, 12 o'clock um, pin that you see there, that is Amphipolis, and the other two to the right, right and the left are more pyramids, one in the island of the Aegean, another one uh, near Veria, uh, Mount Olympus area. And you can see that it's a, an isosceles triangle, and uh, the sides are definitely equidistant. And here we are again. Now let's go into the uh, shocking revelations showing that the Amphipolis uh, tumulus is not a tomb, but a pyramid. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetize my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. And I'm translating from a Greek article for you. Now according to the researcher Vasilios Vasilikos from Traps on Sparta, in his book, The Mysteries of Taigidos, we know Taigidos is the pyramid built on top of a mountain just off, off of Sparta. And he says, the Greek state is called the part of the earth that consists of high and sharp peaks, mostly rocky, to create shadows and consequent religions. According to his many years of research and findings, number of bounties and archaeological evidence confirming his theory, in 25,000 BC, a spaceship named Taleton landed at the top of Taigetos, the mountain in uh, the Peloponnese which has a built pyramid on it, which has the shape of a perfect pyramid. And we have many such pyramids, uh, even around Athens. Uh, you know, the thing is, I don't think people have been interested enough to go and do their own research on this, starting taking pictures, especially now with all these lockups and everything. Uh, but even if you, they, they were professionals that were interested, they would have to have funding. But anyway, going back to this, he says that 25,000 BC, a spaceship named Taliton landed on top of this Taigetos pyramid. The astral travelers were looking for a perfect pyramid where, based on its shadow and stellar verticals, they would give oracles to build the cities and sanctuaries of the whole planet. Uh, now, from the word shadow comes a world religion, uh, which certainly has nothing to do with the current meaning of religion. The shadow of the pyramid, the skia, shadow of the pyramid, was sacred, and it was forbidden to alter its shape, which is why the word, the world, the word religion shadow means I cast a shadow, I sacrifice in the shadow to keep the oracle stable. Now, the meaning of the oracle, a message or information, 
was to formalize to the people the most appropriate place to build cities and sanctuaries, and we know that most of them are to be found on the ley lines of the Earth, the uh, Earth's magneto uh, points, the uh, electromagnetic um, strong points, which the ancients obviously knew about. That's why they built their temples and cities around there. Now, the transfer of the oracle, the, uh, the uh, uh, prophecy of the oracle information was done only by visual contact from top to top between the priesthoods. The name of the new area or city was given based on which star or constellation was aligned vertical. For example, the one point of the planet in terms of alignments, oracles, was Taigetus. I taste the earth and I rule it. That's what Taigetus means. Taigetus. Uh, I Tai means taizome, means I, I am fed. Yi means ge, yeah. Tai yetos, I taste the earth and I rule it. Isn't that something? I never knew. I just, now we learn everything every day. We learn things every day. So tai yetos. From there, the peak of Olympus, Mount Olympus, where the Olympian gods were, the ancient gods of the Greeks. Uh, the point two, city of Theon, was used. And then point three, the area of Troy, of Asia Minor, Troy or Ilion was used. Between them, the three points make a right triangle. And between point one of Taigetus and point two, Leon, there is Delphi, and specifically the Delphi. We know of the Delphi Oracle. Uh, even um, Alexander the, the Great went. A lot of ancients used to go there before starting their uh, conflicts and campaigns before taking any political decision. So uh, Delphi is specifically the exact middle point of the distance, that is the golden section, is the village Gold, five kilometers southwest of Delphi. The wider area, because it is amphibian of the first two utility points, was named Amphisa. A little lower geographically, the city of Galaxidi got its name because in 12,000 BC, it aligned with the Andromeda galaxy. I didn't even know you, I, you know, this is amazing stuff. You know, the archaeology is tying in with uh, paleoastronomy now. So, Galaxidi, it just, it's a city, um, uh, it's a town, village, or town, whatever, an ancient town, just da below Delphi. Uh, and uh, it got its name because 12,000 BC, it aligned with the Andromeda galaxy. It's no coincidence that in the Western continent, America, and specifically in Mexico, there is a mountain peak at the end of a perfect pyramid called El Tayin, Taigetos. Tayin, Taizo, you know, I taste, Yin, Gea, Tai El Tayin. It's amazing. In Mexico, El Tayin is a Greek name, Taigetos. Now let's go to Amphipolis to analyze the name and finally understand what is happening there. Amphipolis, Amphicity, Amphipol, poli meaning the point where double nature or meaning of a double path like Amphisa. And as you see in the image, uh, we have from point to Olympus, the oracle information passes visually through the first two legs of uh, the Peloponnese of Halkidiki, where we have those three little legs jutting out. So this is Halkidiki. The uh, leg to the west, to the west, to the oh sorry, the east is uh, Mount Athos, which is all, is a monastic Christian Orthodox community. So uh, from Olympus to uh, the Oracle information visually passes through the first two legs of Halkidiki, then crosses the Aegean, arriving on the island of Lemnos and ends opposite point three to Ilion. But because the distance from the second leg of Halkidiki to Limnos is quite long, since the Aegean Sea is in the middle, they used and they launched an alternative route through the peaks of northern Greece and ended up in the area of today's Amphipolis. Okay, so because of the fact that they couldn't have eye contact with Limnos, they had to have eye contact with Amphipolis. And that's Amphipolis, that uh, little pin at the 12 o'clock position so that they can have eye contact 
with the uh, priests of that area. Okay? So, the distance from the second leg of Al Kidiki to Limnos is quite long, since the Aegean Sea is in the middle. They used, uh, launched the alternative route through the peaks of northern Greece, ended up the area of today's Amphipolis, where they built the city of the same name. From Amphipolis, the oracle went to Thassos, Samothrace, Imvros, ending up in Troia, Tria, Troy, through the tops of the mountains of the islands, which were a short distance from each other and served more easily to transport the oracle. Now we know that in ancient Greece they used to give signals to each other from mountaintops and temples by use of smoke. They used to send smoke signals to each other. Okay, just like the Indians used to do. They were on high areas sending smoke signals to each other. And let's not be surprised because of the fact that even uh, the DNA evidence shows that the Native American Indians of the Great Lakes area were ancient Greeks of ancient Minoans, of Crete. I wouldn't be surprised that tens of thousands of years ago, before the Great Flood, they had, they had the same communication systems as the ancient Greeks, the Greek oracles and the high priests of the temples, sending um, visual contact with each other with smoke signals. Now, Amphipolis is important because it was a coastal area and it was the last land-based hierarchical center for passing messages to the islands and across the Aegean Sea. Now, the Amphipolis uh, city was named because on the one hand, it was an alternative route for the transfer of the oracle between the points two and three, and on the other hand, the priesthood of Amphipolis could receive and give an oracle from both the two and the three points since it maintained a two-way relationship between the second and third reference points. I guess also if the high priest of one temple didn't know the answer to a, to a question, he probably, by these smoke signals, <laughs> asked the other priests of the other oracles to give him an explanation. Who knows? But anyway, I'm just kidding. But anyway, I don't know. Maybe that was the case. Now, the distance of Amphipolis from Samos, Mount Saos of Samothrace is the same distance of the top of Olympus. Due to the low altitude being a coastal place and lack of high peaks near the sea, they had to build a pyramid with a height of at least 150 meters. Now it remains at a height of about 125, because after you, after you build something, you know, sometimes it settles. 150 meters is what? 300, 400, 400, 500 feet, sod. About five, between 450, 500 feet. It's like a, you know, a, a small mountain or a tall hill. And place the priesthood opposite the geometric volumes to oversee its shadow. Again, they had to have a shadow. And they are there to keep the oracle as they thought they were, they were, they were taught to, to and they would, as they thought. So the so-called tomb of Amphipolis is not just a tomb, it's a place of the priesthood that studied the shadows of the pyramid based on the sun, the moon, and the stars. For this reason, it was believed that the Sphinx, as a symbol, had occult powers and could keep the sanctity of the area a constant shadow, so that the priesthood could serve from there and in the future. Sphinxes were found at the excavation site of uh, Amphipolis, as we know, very nice sphinxes, double sphinxes facing each other, confirming that it is not a tomb, but a sacred initiation site. The same is true in Egypt. There are no mountains or peaks high steady to, st to study the shadow of the sun, moon, and stars, so they built the pyramids along with the sphinxes to keep the oracle stable. And if you look at the pictures, you'll find this. The center of the pyramid behind the Sphinx. So here again we have the Giza pyramid and the Sphinx is at the four o'clock position to the right. That's where it is. And you'll see the shadows. The center of the pyramid behind the Sphinx is 630 meters away. But the pyramid of Amphipolis from the sanctuary where the Sphinxes were found is again the same distance. The Sphinxes were placed at such a distance from the pyramids based on the shadow of the geometric shapes at the solstices of the year. From there we realize that since the sphinxes of Amphipolis and Egypt are equidistant from their respective pyramids, so the height of the pyramid of Amphipolis was the same of that of the Khufu pyramid 
of the Giza Pyramid of Egypt. No corpse or hero of antiquity will be found. In other words, no, no pharaoh or no, no, no mummy was found in the Giza Pyramid um, at the excavation site. And if it's found, it will be because later some people used it as a tomb. In no case was this place built for the burial of a great man, but it is dedicated to the sun god and not, and not, and not ours, but to Vasilikos. The king was mythologically one of the worst monsters ever created by the human imagination. In his first representations, he looked like a small plum snake, which could kill with its venom, but also with its own gaze, as it was believed that it could set fire or stone someone or something when looking at it, turn someone into stone, like Medusa's head, turning people to stone when she looked, when they were, they looked at her head. Turning, Medusa would turn people to stone. Just like this little plum snake would turn people to stone. What can I tell you? Okay, okay, we have to go along with what this uh, archaeologist is telling us now. So the only way to kill a queen was to show her an image in a mirror to have her hear a or to have her hear a rooster's crow. So that's exactly what Ulysses did. He used a mirror to kill uh, Medusa. Was it Ulysses? Or was it Hercules? I can't remember. I thought it was, I, I have no idea. <laughs> but one of these ancient heroes killed uh, uh, the Medusa by cutting off her head, but he didn't, he used a mirror. He didn't look at her, at her with his eyes. He used a mirror. So the only uh, way to kill this Medusa snakehead fake creature was to show her an image in a mirror, have her hear a rooster crow. But the only animal that could kill this terrible monster was the tiny weasel as it was immune to the look of this uh, creature and its venom. Now, astronomically, though, it is the brightest star in the constellation of Leo, Leo A, with the Latin name Regulus. And see, we have Regulus on the ecliptic at around the uh, 4 or 5 o'clock position. Uh, Regulus, uh, the name Vasilikos means little king, came from the belief that this particular star ruled the celestial affairs, Basil is a triple star with two dim companions that form a double star. It's a star that uh, aligns verticals with the sanctuary of Amphipolis, which is why we meet the mighty and majestic lion that was taken from its place and has been set in the wrong place for decades. Two even smaller lions and various geometric and astronomical finds are to be found, as well as tombs to the sun god. So, this is what this... Uh, uh, researcher Vasilikos, Vasilis Vasilikos from Trabzon, Sparta, Greece, wrote in his book The Mysteries of Daigidos, and tying into the fact that, uh, in fact, the Amphipolis tumulus is not a tomb, uh, even though bodies have been found, which he says were placed there later. This, in fact, was at least 25,000 BC, having to do with the prophecies of various uh, uh, oracles throughout Greece and they had to build these fake pyramids on top of mountaintops in order to be able to have a line of sight with each other and communicate with each other having to do with their prophecies and their oracles and the Amphipolis tumulus was actually a pyramid built there in order to have a communication base between um, uh, Olympus and Samothrace and Troy because they couldn't see because of the curvature of the earth they couldn't see uh, one of the islands uh, Thrace they couldn't be able to they weren't able to see it so they were able to see Amphipolis much closer once they built that pyramid there which was about 500 feet uh, above sea level so this I've translated for from a Greek article I think I think this is amazing this is amazing information Please leave your comments, and I hope you found this interesting. It certainly is an interesting topic of discussion, and I'm sure that you'll be um, you'll be amazing people once they, <laughs> once you start opening this topic concerning the oracles and the fact that they had to build pyramids in order to send smoke signals <laughs> to each other, to you know to to converse as to what um, what answer they would have to give these kings. You know they used to get paid a lot of money. The kings and, and leaders and elite used to pay these oracles 
these high priests a lot of money for a, a, a prophecy that was uh, favorable or whatever. They wanted the truth anyway. Uh, most of them hopefully helping their situation. <laughs> okay, so thank you for your support. Please leave your comments. Thank you.